trying to help you guys. But I still can. While you're here today, have fun!
The drivers are ready. The crew is ready. We hope you're ready too. It's race time at Wiscasset Speedway. Get settled in, folks. The show starts now. Hey, shake and bake, Cal. Woo! Shake and bake! And with that, a good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back home to Wiscasset Speedway. Whether it's your first time or your 100th time or maybe more than that, we appreciate you being here. We are here for day two of our big Labor Day weekend doubleheader. It is Boss Hog 150 Day. It has arrived, and we have got a nice show here for you today. A couple of changes. We'll fill you in on that in just a moment, but this is one of our regularly scheduled divisions here that's going to start the show. The Portland Glass Strictly Streets. Of course, the Norms Used Cars Pro Stocks have center stage today for the Boss Hog 150. Unfortunately, the Exit Realty Pro Trucks were not able to get enough to get up here to join us today. So at a last-minute call, our Thunder 4 Minis and Modifieds both stepped up. They're going to help fill that gap for you today. So we'll give you a good four-division show today on Boss Hog 150 Day. Line up first to two heats for the Strictly's. Ethan Dinsmore and Mike Delano on the front row. Caleb Emerson Maines and Scott Wigan on row two. Alex Cromwell and Andrew Glenn. Brady Romano and Landon Tapley fill out the field. And this will be filling the front half of the field for their 30 lap feature this afternoon. And as always, to give you the heat race action, my partner in crime, Nick Hoff. Let's go racing on Boss Hog Day. Ethan Dinsmore and Landon Tapley gets the jump Tapley gets a push from behind by Mike Delano in the 27 Ethan Dinsmore coming back strong on the high side in the 8x he looks like he's gonna take the lead this time Ethan Dinsmore from the high side, and these guys look like they want to go three wide for a second. The four gets stuffed almost into the wall. He has to cross over and try to get to the bottom. Tapley holding him up. Mike Delano in the 27 takes over second. Dinsmore, your leader, struggles out of turn two, gathers it back up, but loses some ground on the pack. Caleb Emerson Maines is in that four car, up tight on the back bumper of Delano, and now taking a look to the outside for second. This time around, it's gonna be halfway. Ethan Dinsmore getting back into the swing of things, hitting his marks, getting in line, and starting to pull back away to a couple car lengths over Delano. Five laps complete, five to go. Emerson Maines getting hung out to dry on the high side. In the 96, Alex Cromwell takes a look underneath as Delano takes a peek under Dinsmore for the top spot. <laughs> Evidently, I spoke too soon. It looked like Dinsmore was starting to pull away, but Delano had something else to say about it here in the second half. Your new leader is Mike Delano in the 27. Now Dinsmore gets stuck up on the high side. Caleb Emerson Maines scoots on underneath for second, and Cromwell is trying to keep the door open for third. Dinsmore goes around. We're ready to go back green. Two laps to go when they get rolling. Mike Delano in the 27, Caleb Emerson mains in the four. Row two, we'll have Alex Cromwell and Brady Romano in the 78. Street stock, heat number one of two, coming at you. And a correction there, folks. We've actually got three heats of street stocks today. 
three heats in the paddock. The Street Stocks did not disappoint this evening, and they're not disappointing up front. We've got a great battle for the lead. White flag waves. It's a dead heat coming out of two. Cromwell goes around from third place. Slight contact with the 26. He's got a broken left front tire heading to the infield. Checkered flag is going to wave for Delano. What a race. Delano hangs on to it. Caleb Emerson Maines takes second in the four. Brady Romano capitalizes and takes third. And let's get back under green with heat two of three for the Strictly Streets. Wade Kennedy in the double zero. Keith Drost in the 74, hanging tidy on the outside. Scott Eck in the 27, looking down low, looking to snatch second place away. Kurt Hewins in that Forrest Peasley throwback number 17, never afraid to go three wide. And he's looking to do it again right now if he has to. Takes a peek down low under Eck for a brief moment there out of four last time around. Kurt Hewins in the 17 getting antsy. We've seen him do it plenty of times. He'll go three wide if he has to, but he's clear up top. Well, he was for a second, but the 23, Jonathan Emerson is hanging tight. And Hewins trying to be the nice guy, letting Eck get back down to the bottom, going into each and every corner as Keith Drost holds on to second. Kurt Hewen says, you're clear, Scott. You're clear up top. Move on up there and let me have the bottom. The 17 car looks underneath for third place. Five laps in the books. We're halfway. And Jeremy Glacier in the 99 wants to keep Scott Eck up there in the second groove. Glacier is going to take over fourth. And the 23 of Emerson will follow to round out the top five. Wade Kennedy continues to hang on to the lead. Here comes Kurt Hewins. Three cars under a blanket. Kennedy, Drost, and Hewins as Hewins takes a look to the high side now for second. Jeremy Glacier reels them in as well. We got four cars under a blanket for the top four coming to the two to go signal. Wade Kennedy in command. Keith Dross does not want to sacrifice that inside line. Hewins gets into him and messes up Keith Drost. He gets sideways on the back stretch and Hewins motors by on the high side. White flag to go. Kurt Hewins will not be happy with second. He's got to win them all. He'll open up the inside under Kennedy and go for the top spot going into three. Checkered flag in hand. Briggs and Sean Austin on the front row. Rookie Ashton Burgess coming off his first podium in the 34. Matt Cannon Jr. in the 08. Your point leader, Josh St. Clair in car number 51. The 83 is Sean Gilpatrick. Two-time champ Kyle Hewins racing the Boss Hog number 14 today. And James Doucette in the number 28. Let's get back racing with the third and final heat for the Strictly Streets brought to you by Portland Glass Company. Chaz Briggs in the 82 takes command as Sean Austin... Loses track of him in a hurry. Briggs gets a couple car lengths already on the back stretch. Yeah. 
And the yellow flag is out. A couple cars into the wall. Matt Cannon Jr. almost comes to a stop in the 08. Josh St. Clair in the 14. Let's get back green. One lap was in the books. Nine to go. And then this time it's Ashton Burgess in the 34 up for the challenge on the high side of your leader, Chaz Briggs, as he reclaims the top spot. And then it's Josh St. Clair in the 51 down on the inside. Sean Austin in the 61 trying to protect that inside as Kyle Hewins took a peek down there a moment ago but now resorts to the top side to take fourth away from Austin. Josh St. Clair in the 51 goes up into the second groove to try to take the lead away from Briggs. The inside is open and Josh St. Clair tries a crossover. Not gonna be able to do it that time around. He'll continue to work the inside and try to open it up underneath Chaz Briggs. Halfway flags are out this time for the 82. And St. Clair will finally get underneath and make it a dead even battle for the top spot. Underneath Chaz Briggs. He will do it. We have a new leader. Josh St. Clair in the 51 now takes the lead with four laps to go. Briggs back to second. Burgess rounds out the top three. Kyle Hewins looking strong, picking his way back up through the field. Now up to fourth in the 14, and Mack Hannon Jr. rounds out your top five with two laps to go. Hewins slips underneath Ashton Burgess. He'll climb into the top three. White flag in hand for the Dave's World, number 51, Josh St. Clair. Three qualifiers for the Strictly Streets today. And Josh St. Clair is gonna pick up qualifier number three. Let's go Thunder 4 Racing, brought to you by Sweats Concrete. First of two heats. Adam O'Neill in the 14. Bruce Hall Jr. in the 57. A jump on the restart. Calls it a no-go. Adam O'Neill jumped it. A swift crossover move by Bruce Hall. Doesn't work out for him. Jumps the curb and kicks up some dirt in turn two as Adam O'Neill runs away with it. Derek Cook in the 88, up to second now. All over the back bumper is the 08, Kyle Willette, but another, a crossover underneath by David Cook in the 44. He'll take over third. Trouble for the 08. Kyle Ouellette a little bit wishy-washy through the last couple of corners and he is losing ground. The Cook brothers are side by side for second. David Cook climbs his way through the field in the 44. And now he'll give chase to Adam O'Neill.
It's a couple of Toyota Celicas up front. Adam O'Neill, David Cook, he's closing in in a hurry. Now right up tight on the back bumper at the halfway point. Five laps to go. David Cook trying to sneak underneath Adam O'Neill. Contact for fourth and fifth. Ricky Austin got sideways in the 42X, but he gathers it back up and he'll continue to round out the top five. Contact for the lead. O'Neill goes around with some help from David Cook. Green flag stays out. O'Neill will keep it going. Adam O'Neill trying to go dirt track racing. Keeps it down on the infield a little bit longer than necessary, but finally gets it back up on the asphalt. And we got the Cook brothers once again side by side. Two laps left. Three cars are under a blanket. We've got a shakeup for the top spot. Derek Cook in the 88 CRX now to the top spot. White flag in hand. David Cook getting hung out to dry. Kyle Ouellette trying to capitalize. Coming to the checkered. David Cook fighting back hard on the top side. A photo finish for second place. Mike Golding pulls out a line and lets the fast cars go up through three wide. Ryan Stilwell tries to run away with it and Zach Audette is up to second in a hurry. Shane Weber up to third. We'll give chase to your top two. Zach Audette is reeling in the 81 car. Awfully fast. Bumper to bumper for fourth place. Dylan Cook in the 44, Mike Golding in the 26, all over the back bumper for fourth. Zach Audette has caught your leader. Less than a car length now. He's going to be a nice guy and take a look to the high side of Ryan Stillwell. Coming to the halfway flags this time. Bumper to bumper for the top spot. Five laps in the books, five left to go. Stillwell leaves the door open ever so slightly. Zach Audette trying to fill the hole. Four laps left. Hard contact going into one. And Stillwell loses the bumper. That bumper was hanging on by one rivet. And it came off at the top of turn one. Zach Audette takes command. Moves Stillwell, Stillwell out of line and he'll receive two to go now. This will wrap up the second half of our Thunder Four Minis with one lap to go.
out front. It's Mr. Excitement in the 19 car. He'll pick up qualifier number two for the Sweats Concrete Thunder Fours. Mr. Excitement, Zach Odette picks up heat number two. Ryan Stillwell hangs on to second. The Squirrel, Shane Weber in the seven, your most recent driver of the month, takes third. Fine field of modifieds answering the bell at the last minute. Just one car away from separating them into two heats. Contact deep in the field. Faith Cleaves and Sean Knight brush together as Sean Knight gets shuffled to the rear. It's Adam Chadbourne in the one. Wayne Witten Jr. holds down second. Here comes Ryan Ripley in the 09 for third. The newcomer in the six. His first time racing a modified here this season. Troy Morse rounds out fourth. One of our regulars rounds out the top five. Hashtag got Maddie. Maddie Sanborn in the 64. Five laps complete, five to go. And Ryan Ripley is looking to up it. One more position all over the back bumper of Wayne Witten Jr. Adam Chadbourne looking to run away with this one, but it is still up for grabs for runner-up honors. Witten trying to hang on to the charge from Ryan Ripley. We got a spin in the middle of three and four and some more contact going into one, but the caution was already out. Sean Knight and Doug Phillips in the eight go around to bring out that yellow. Ryan Hayes should get his spot back as he spun after the caution in the 17 Three car. laps to go. It's gonna be a green, two, white checker for this one. With Adam Chadbourne and Wayne Witten Jr. and Ryan Ripley is right there on the inside. As suspected, Ripley is gonna fill the inside underneath Witten. Chadbourne trying to run away with it with a couple car lengths in a hurry. He'll get the two to go signal. Wayne Witten cuts down to the inside right in front of Matty Sanborn in a hurry. Troy Morris loses one spot to the restart. White flag in hand. Multi-time modified champion is looking to pick up the heat race on Boss Hog Weekend. Thank the good folks at Portland Glass with locations all over the state of Maine and throughout northern New England. If you have uh, glass needs, whether it's residential or construction, business, or your automobile, count on Portland Glass. It's time to go feature racing with the street stocks. Mike Delano, Caleb Emerson, Maine's gonna bring him to the green flag. Ethan Dinsmore in the 8X, sleeping on that one and loses a couple of spots, falling back out of the top five. Everybody trying to get to the bottom. Brady Romano and Wade Kennedy does so. Three wide as Mack Hannon Jr. cracks the top 10, going three wide around Landon Tapley in the 08. 
Matt Cannon Jr. trying to come up through. The front row still remains the same. Mike Delano, Caleb Emerson Maines going at it for the top spot contact. Emerson goes around. Everybody scatters. We remain green. Everybody scatters in turn four. And Mike Delano runs away with it, that one. Brady Romano up to second, more contact, mid-pack. Scott Eck in the 27, goes around to the infield. Caleb Emerson Maines probably not too happy, a caution didn't come out for him. So he lucks out with a caution just a couple of laps later and he's gonna hit pit side to assess the damage. Time with Mike Delano and Brady Romano. And a correction to the high side of Delano. That's Keith Drost in the 74. What a drive out of turn two. Keith Drost trying to take over the top spot in the 74. Both of those guys up front seeking their first feature win of the season. I believe they're seeking their first top three run of the season for that front row, Delano and Drost. And Keith Drost is gonna clear. He drops down to the bottom and checks out from Delano. Already a couple car lengths between them. Keith Drost is putting on a clinic in the 74. Double file action behind your second place car. Mike Delano trying to fend off the hard chargers of Jeremy Glacier and Brady Romano. Everybody fighting for the inside, but Brady Romano makes the second groove work around Delano. The 78 car of Romano moves up to second. Mike Delano trying to hold on for his first top three of the year. But they are stacked up behind him. Jeremy Glacier and Wade Kennedy now looking for third from Delano. A lot of guys hitting the curb. Everybody's fighting for the same piece of real estate down low. Wade Kennedy up in the second groove making it work on the high side of Glacier. It's a two-car breakaway for Keith Drost and Brady Romano. Leaving the rest of the field in the dust. Wade Kennedy making the high side work. It's a chain reaction, hitting bumpers. Wade Kennedy in the double zero. He makes it work up in the second groove and he takes third away. Already checking out from the rest of the field trying to chase down the top two. Mike Delano racing in defense mode now. He's got nothing for the top three but he's trying to fend off the stacked field behind him all over the back bumper. Here comes Matt Cannon Jr. to the top side. Everybody going around Delano on the top side. Matt Cannon Jr. moves it up to fourth. Halfway flags are out. 15 laps in, 15 laps left. Josh St. Clair, your points leader. 
in the Strictly Streets. Moves up into the top five in the 51. Contact with Jeremy Glacier and Kurt Hewins. Fighting for the inside, oh! Hard contact, Glacier goes around and Cromwell in the 96 has nowhere to go. Clobbers him hard in turn two. Caution, these lead two cars perhaps did not want to see as they built up a big lead. Keith Drost and Brady Romano each looking for their first Strictly win. And some heavy hitters starting to line up behind them. Kennedy and Hannon. St. Clair and Hewins in there as well on row number three. Back underway. Romano swings out wide, gets a good run down into turn three and four. They'll stay even up. Now Dross takes control of the race once again. Kennedy sneaking up the inside lane. He will take over second, and here they come. St. Clair is up into third. Hewins right behind him. The freight train is lined up to the inside. Kyle Hewins gets it sideways, and his brother Kurt right there to take advantage. Josh setting up on the outside. Kennedy looking for his best finish in that double zero. But you've got the St. Clair cars, third, fourth, and fifth. Ten laps to go this time by. Josh picking up a little bit of ground, inch by inch on the outside. He'll nose ahead for second. The Hewins brothers side by side for fourth and fifth. Kurt's inside, Kyle's on the outside. Keith Drost has built up a half straightaway lead. Kennedy slides it in, they're coming out three wide on the front stretch. Kurt Hewins from fifth to second in one lap. Josh still pedaling hard on the outside. Kennedy back to fourth. He may lose that spot now. He'll get it back in line, but they got a ways to go to catch that number 74. Five extra laps in this race today. We'll see if it makes a difference. <laughs> Keith Drost, he's been in this position before. We are into bonus time now. Dross nearly got his first win last year, but had a lot of pressure from Josh St. Clair to take it away from him in the final lap. Can he seal the deal today? Laps winding down. Drost, Hewen, St. Clair, one, two, three. Kyle Hewins third, uh, fourth. Mack Hannon Jr. fifth. Brady Romano sixth. Wade Kennedy has slipped back to seventh. Next time by the stripe, two laps to go. White flag lab coming at you now. Three eighths of a mile to go. Doesn't look like Hewins has got anything to bite into that lead anymore. 
final time. Down through three and four, checkered flag awaits. Keith Drost will get his first win this afternoon at Wiscasset Speedway. Let's head trackside for Coastal Auto Parts Victory Lane. Nick Huff's got your top three, and we love first-time winners here at Wiscasset Speedway. That's right, we do. Everybody, give him a round of applause. Keith Drost. <laughs> Keith, you've had one second this season, but not much for podium finishes, and now you finally did it on top, and I bet you didn't think that your first win would come by almost a straightaway like that. You really was on rails tonight. No, I did not think that, but I was watching that guy back then in the 51, though. <laughs> you were watching the 51? He was third. Was you, you were, you were thinking he was going to get by Hewins? <laughs> I was making sure I stay ahead of him, yeah. All right, Keith, who do you got to thank for the big win? Got to thank my wife and daughter for always supporting me. I got to thank Ben Ashline. He's helped me so much. I uh, got to thank Gil. He's my crew chief. Uh, Ideal Recycling for sponsoring me. Uh, Keith, I know you thank Ben Ashline uh, each and every week, but where he's racing a pro stock this week. He's not usually here in the pits. Did it certainly help that he was right here pit side to help you out? Yeah, it's always nice to have his magic fingers on it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Nice run, Keith. First time winner. All right. Kurt Hewins. It was a wild one. But that's par for the course for you, right? <laughs> yeah. First of all, I got to thank Billy Charles. He put the clip on the front of this. Uh, uh, a ton of people helped me. We made to the 250 last weekend, raced them races. Uh, we had that all won, but somebody didn't want me to have it. Uh, I got to thank Dave St. Clair for paying the bill. Uh, everybody that helps me, Ryan, Red, Todd, my sister, everybody that helps me, uh, I couldn't do it without them. Is, uh, is Kyle your son? Brother. K Kyle Hewins is your brother? Did you, did you guys have fun racing out there? I beat him, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Of course he had fun. He beat him. Josh What's St. Clair. Oh, I, I was talking about Kurt oh. there. But hey, I'll say something to you. Did you, uh, you think you were going to get by that guy? Maybe a restart might have helped you out? Who's that, Kurt or Keith? Oh, yeah, Kurt. Well, yeah. Kurt, you guys were the ones that were bumper to bumper having fun. Yeah, no, I don't know. We were both about the same speed, I think. I made a little gain and then lost it all jumping the curb, but I'm happy with third. Uh, it was kind of mayhem there in the beginning, so we're not wadded up in a heap, so I'm happy about that. Uh, the super, we'll see what happens. Uh, I don't feel like it's got a whole lot of speed, but um, we'll see what 150 brings. It sounds like you wrapped up the points championship for the Strictly Streets unofficially with this third place run tonight. You got enough points for the final, final weekend, so congratulations, Josh. Hey, that's pretty cool, back to back. Um, yeah, I didn't win any championships for a long time. Now, like, now they seem to be rolling in, so uh, we'll just keep driving and having fun. All right, good luck in the Pro Stock. Boss Hog 150 later, Josh. He'll take third in the Strictly Streets. Cal Hewen second, Keith Drost with his first win ever in a Wiscasset Strictly Street. First win at Wiscasset Speedway in any division. Congratulations. All right, folks, we've had a Long pause in the action, but we're finally ready to get back rolling with the features. 30 laps for the Sweats Concrete Thunder 4 Minis. They're gonna see the green flag this time with Derek Cook on the inside, Zach Audette on the outside. It's time to get back green flag racing. Trouble on the back stretch. Shane Weber gets sideways in the marbles, but gathers it up after losing a spot. He falls out of the top five. Zach Audette leads. Derek Cook, your pole sitter, had nothing for him on the restart. It's the Cook brothers, Derek and David, for second and third. Kyle Ouellette trying to keep him honest. 
rounding out the top four and looking onward as they race side by side for second right in front of him. Shane Weber makes his bet way back into the top five and he is reeling them in in a hurry. The seven car is closing in on the top four racing side by side right in front of him. David Cook gets hung out to dry in the 44 and he loses two spots getting stuck on the high side as Shane Weber gets underneath and takes over fourth. A bump to the rear going into three. Shane Weber gets shuffled up high and Cook slides underneath in the 44. They continue to cross things up for fourth and fifth between Cook and Weber. Zach Audet looking to run away with this one. But we've got four cars under a blanket right behind him looking for second place honors. It's held by Derek Cook in the 88 at the moment. Shane Weber is going to take a look to the high side and see if there's any traction out there. Doesn't look likely he does it once again getting high in the marbles on the back stretch and getting a little sloppy. He'll fall back in single file and we've got a freight train from second to fifth. Bumper to bumper, four cars strong. Derek Cook, Kyle Ouellette, David Cook and Shane Weber. Weber looking to make the second groove work this time. Ricky Austin might have a piece of the action just barely sitting out of the top five in the 42X. If these guys continue to keep bumping each other and slowing their pace, Ricky Austin is gonna catch them. Major bump drafting going on. Derek Cook, Kyle Ouellette, and David Cook continue to run single file, bumping each other, trying to move each other up off the bottom. It's getting vicious out there for the top three. Shane Weber tries the high side once again. Everybody just trying to protect the inside line, not wanting to give it up off the white curb. Major bump drafting action going on as Derek Cook tries to hold him off. David Cook takes advantage of Kyle Ouellette slipping up high. And they run side by side for third now. Coming to the halfway, it's all Mr. Excitement, Zach Audette way out front. A lapped car is gonna come into play as they race side by side for second. Or they did for a moment, but Kyle Ouellette is unable to maintain on the high side. Lapped car coming right up for a second on back. Derek Cook continues to hold him off. Kyle Ouellette gets shuffled all the way back to the top five now as Weber sneaks underneath for fourth. It's the Cook boys running second and third, bumping each other. Derek in the Honda CRX. David giving him the bumper in the Toyota Celica.
Shane Weber just outside the top three, knocking on the door, hoping that the Cook boys continue to bump and slam and slow up each other's pace. Hopefully Shane Weber could possibly capitalize. 10 laps to go for Zach Audet. David Cook just cannot run on the top side. He is desperately trying to move Derek off the inside. David takes a peek to the high side for a moment, but he quickly gets back down low to avoid Shane Weber filling the hole. Man, oh man, we are bumper to bumper and huge contact. Everybody goes scrambling. Fine job by Derek Cook hanging on to that one. He went down in the grass and he loses the spot finally to David Cook in the 44. Shane Weber to the high side once again, looking to crack the top three in that seven car. And I guess they didn't like that one for the 44 of David Cook. He gets the black flag for just about taking out the second place car at the moment of Derek Cook. We've got five laps to go, now four as Mr. Excitement crosses the line once again. David Cook takes it pit side. Sportsman-like responding to the black flag. Zach Audet trying to lap the entire field. He's closing in on the next pack of cars. But he'll get the two to go signal. And he's probably gonna run out of time. Thunder four minis so far going caution free as we'll see the white flag for Zach Audet. Audet doing a valiant effort to try to lap the entire field, but he's gonna fall short. The rest of them will come to the white flag. We've got a barn burner for second. Three wide, ladies and gentlemen. Contact going into one. Zach Audet takes the win, but they're still duking it out for second and third. Derek Cook holds on to the spot at the moment. Here comes Kyle Ouellette to the high side, coming to the checkered flag. It's going to be the 88, Derek Cook, fending off Kyle Ouellette for second place. And tough break for Shane Weber, getting shuffled out of the mix on the final lap there. Let's head uh, trackside, your top three here in the Coastal Auto Parts Victory Lane. All right, and here's your winner, Zach Audet, everybody. Zach, were you trying to lap the whole field? Were you uh, making that your goal? No, I just didn't know where everybody was. Kind of went good today, so... Well, uh, Ken was saying that you are in part thankful for getting these some of these Thunder 4 minis uh, scrambled up to run on Boss Hog Day. Absolutely. Ken called, uh, messaged me yesterday and asked me if we could, you think I could get any cars together. And, of course, we have four that come out of our house, house stable, I guess you want to call it. But um, you, you, they asked and we brought them. So. All right. Awesome, Zach. Thanks a bunch for your support and congratulations on the win. Well, if we could have folks stand back away from the fence, please. As if we didn't have enough scares today. 
All right, we'll move on to second. Hey, Derek Cook, did you have fun? Is, uh, is David your brother? Yeah, he's my brother. You guys have fun racing together? Oh, I do, yeah. I was coming. Well, they, they black flagged him for taking you out yeah. and your brothers. If you, were, I would, I would. if you were able to make the call, would you have kicked your brother out of the race? No. You were like, we're, we're having fun out there, right? Yeah, I just said, friggin' and ripped right through the infield and jumped back up on the track. All right, Derek, nice run for a second. Uh, who do you got to thank? Uh, R&B race chassis, Ricky Austin. Uh, he does a lot for me. Uh, my girlfriend, Mariah, Douglas Rufin, Tellers Auto Sales, DNC Home Improvements, and uh, everybody else, my parents. And, well, plenty of questions for Kyle Willett. What's going on with the 08? Uh, apparently, my fan was too close to the exhaust, so it caught on fire. The fan, like the plastic part, yeah. caught on fire? Yeah, she melted up. Nah. Yeah, that ended my day. <laughs> I guess it's a third place. Yeah, it's a third place. Will it live to see another day? Oh, uh, I should, yeah, of course. All right, just probably got to replace the fan or two. All right, that's your top three from Coastal Auto Parts Victory Lane for the Thunder Four Minis. Back up to you, Ken. Hey, thank you very much. And uh, we do want to thank our friends from Coastal Auto Parts as always. Coastal Auto Parts Napa is your locally owned and operated automotive parts provider. Your experience is their top priority, which is why their team is equipped with the Napa know-how to make sure you leave with the right part every time. If you need a part or have an automotive-related question, call or stop by today. Like their Facebook page to stay up to date on all their latest sales, offers, and events. Or visit any one of their 30 locations throughout the state of Maine. Go on their website, capnapa.com. Lights off once again on the Norms Used Cars Ford Mustang Pace Car. And heads up between the top two winners in the division right at the front row. Green flag is out. Pretty well even down the back through. Little advantage for Adam Chadbourne. Ripley trying to get down in line behind him and it stacks up some traffic in the process. Ryan Ripley in a hurry to get to the bottom ends up making a couple guys check up behind him. And as usual, we talked about this last night with Logan Melcher. Lots of times the problems start further up and end up wrecking cars further back. And that's a good example of it. This 3 8 mile oval was built by Wilford Cronk back in the um, mid to late 60s. Took him two or three years to finish the track once he broke ground on it. But this place opened for business for his first official race, July 27, 1969. And from that day right through to today, and until further notice, this is Maine's fastest racetrack. Twenty-six of McKee has parked it for the rest of the race. Sean Knight's back with us, so lights out. We're going green next time. Bye. Back underway, Adam Chadbourne and Ryan Ripley resume their battle. And Witten right there on the back bumper of the one car. Ripley's gonna stay there to the outside, but now has the required room to get down underneath and following the tire tracks of car number one. Side by side back there for the fifth position, Faith Cleaves. Last year's rookie of the year in the 89 to her outside the 17, rookie Ryan Hayes. Faith back in action for the first time in about a month after a pretty hard wreck on pit road about a month ago. Good to have her back in action with us. She finished third in the points last year and took home Rookie of the Year honors. We got a pretty stout group of rookies in this division this year, led by Brandon Williams. 
Williams not racing today, but coming off a podium finish last night. Troy Morse loses it in turn one. Lights off, ready to go back at it with five complete. Chadbourne back in charge. Ripley to second, Witten third, Wayne looking for his first podium of the, fi of the season. Maddie Sanborn racing there with Faith Cleaves. Maddie Sanborn might have a rough go of it. That looks like it's overheating. Maddie Sanborn spewing water out the bleeder. The 64 might be overheating. And he currently runs fourth trying to hold off Faith Cleaves. Now Sanborn out in the clear, has fourth to himself. Faith Cleaves settles it into fifth. Behind her, Sean Knight, side by side with Alan Moeller Sr. Moeller inch by inch around the outside of that 25 car. Wayne Witten holding down third. I believe this would be his third, I mean his, his first third place run in a modified. Wayne Witten in his rookie modified season just uh, purchasing that car from the Treadwell family. And we were happy to see Brian Treadwell back out here last night. Brian Treadwell normally runs the 48. He's taken a few weeks absence for health reasons, but happy to see him back out here last night. Looks like the 64 of Matty Sanborn's engine temps have come back down. Well, looks like they came down a little bit. It's not spewing quite as much, but I think it's still puking out a little bit of water on the 64. He's trying to finish this one with 10 laps to go and hold on to a fourth. Adam Chadbourne does not want Ryan Ripley to sweep the weekend. Ryan Ripley picked up the feature last night. Adam Chadbourne wants his chance to win a modified feature on Boss Hog Weekend. Wayne Witten once again looking for his very first modified top three in his rookie season. Matty Sanborn all by himself in fourth. Faith Cleves trying to hold on to a top five. They are stacked up right behind the 89. Side by side, just outside the top five, it's Alan Moeller and Sean Knight. Five laps to go this time at the line for the one of Adam Chadbourne trying to win it on Boss Hog Weekend. Five to go.
Laps winding down. Adam Chadbourne in charge of this one. Looking to pick up his fourth win of the season. And add to his impressive resume here was Cassett Speedway. Two laps to go. And there goes Alan Moeller down pit road. He'll drop out a lap early. White Laundry is out. Final time around the track. Adam Chadborn picks up the win. Ryan Ripley second. Jeez, I hope Adam left himself enough room to get out of the car. Watch that last step, buddy. Adam Chadborn hopping out with the win. Congratulations, uh, getting a well-deserved drink of water and uh, a rare opportunity to start up front. I know it's a not a point race, but any chance you get to start up front is a good one and a good heads-up race between the top two winners in the class. Yeah, that was a good run. Uh, I was, I, I'm not going to lie, I was a little nervous when we uh, got, had to start side by side. He usually has really good restarts, and uh, we just had the better piece today, that's all. I uh, know you were looking to run the 150 today, but uh, good to come home with a W regardless. Yeah, we had some uh, engine problems, had to end the day before it really started on that, but uh, I was glad we got a chance to run this today, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Who are we thanking today on win, career win number 68 here at Wiscasset Speedway? <laughs> I lost my cheat sheet, man. I'll <laughs> oh, just make up some names then. Uh, I gotta thank my friends and family, all my sponsors, uh, Mid Coast Glass, Norm's Used Cars, Shop to Shore Carpentry, Napa, Shaz and Sun Towing, Cooks and Construction, Lynn Springs on the road, Montswig Roadhouse. Oh yeah, there we go. Paul LePage. Uh, Burt's Oil Service, Dresden Takeout, I think that's it, man. All right, great job. Adam Chadbourne picking up career win number 68. All right, Ryan Ripley down here in Victory Lane. And uh, again, how about uh, you guys don't get too many chances to get a good heads-up start on the front row on these? No, I wish it was flipped the other way. But no, it was a good run. Um, congrats to him. He definitely he had me covered tonight. I think we were pretty close. But nope, congrats to him. Who are we thinking on this one? I know you got to get back there and get ready yeah. for the big race. Yeah, wishful thinking. Uh, Bodie, Scott, Andy, Ryan Ledbetter, my dad, mom, my grandparents. Um, oh, Forrest Peasley. Um, we're definitely missing him. Williams Greenery, um, Naughty Lady. There's a bunch of people I'm probably missing, but thank you. All right, congratulations, Ryan Ripley, bringing it home as your runner-up. Wayne Witten Jr. making his first podium appearance of the season. Wayne, congratulations. You've had the speed. You just needed the luck to come with it. That's right. We finally got some luck. If it wasn't for my sister and brother-in-law, Jeff and Wendy Maines, we wouldn't be here today. The rest of my crew couldn't make it, Marcel and Sean. Uh, but here we are. The car wasn't much when we got it, but we've been dialing this car all year long, and we finally made it up here. Thank you, everyone. Thanks to the Jordans for an awesome place to race, and we'll see you all in two weeks. All right, Wayne Witten Jr., to give a nice round of applause, his first podium of the season. Ryan Ripley second. Adam Shadborn, your winner today with the 88.5 FM Modifieds. <laughs>